The old high school in the Bronx. Unbelievable. I haven't been here in 25 years. Everyone I went to school with here is fossilized in the Museum of Natural History. Kind of eerie. I never heard the halls this quiet before. Everything looks a little smaller, too. Principal's office. Ooh. I used to sing rock and roll with the guys in that one place that made us sound like we were in a recording studio. <laughs> Bye. Group. You guys look old. Where's your hair? You were skinny. Irving, you weren't even black in the 50s. Yeah, feels good. Why not come back to your past? A regular ball Bring back this 50 do, do, do. I'm singing to you In my cool 50s teenage way Every word I say Is an old cliche I love you I pray by those stars above you I'll never, no, I'll never say goodbye Ow! Put on your barber tie, comb your hair, have a thrill While taking cover for your air raid drill Those wonderful fifties Remember my darling, three flashes all clear on the drill And so I wrote a letter to Joe McCarthy in the, in the sky. I said, my teacher is a communist. He said, is she now or has she ever been? Please, please say those words. Ladies and gentlemen, HBO proudly presents Robert Klein. Still the child of the 50s. A little older, more decrepit, you know, <laughs> certainly a little more weight. You know, I'm admitting. Uh, but still here, survived. Child of the 50s, man of the 80s before you. The plumbing's breaking down just a little, but it's staying together. So I, well, actually, I'm treating myself, indulging, because I stopped smoking several months ago for the final time, you know. And, uh, one vice at a time, man. Whatever I want. I ever eat a pound of butter? Oh. <laughs> yeah. 
it right down there. I got busy uh, about a year and a half ago. I got one of these spurs and my wife was pregnant. I said, I'm getting an exercise bike. That's all there is to it. I'm gonna be, you know, healthy. Have it a year and a half. I'm ashamed to say it has an eighth of a mile on it. <laughs> what happened is that fateful day that I realized that my sport jacket fit perfectly on the handlebars. <laughs> and there's a place for my beer on the chain drive down here. There's a McDonald's, a little rack you can put on everything. It's, uh, I know there's still very juvenile things about me. I was always sort of like that erratic, you know. When I was eight years old, I wanted to be a nuclear physicist, highly precocious profession. I'm not sure if uh, my future is in astronomy or nuclear physics, possibly quantum mechanics. You know. When I was 30, I wanted to be a cowboy. <laughs> uh, everything, and here I am, a parent. Here I am, a very old parent, to be sure. You know, I have a baby of, of eight months old already. Uh, very fashionable, you know, New York Magazine, quiche, the inside story, how to have a child at 106, one of those. Uh, should have seen the amniocentesis waiting room, you know, any results yet? The people in there, forget it. And I wanted everything checked, you know, uh, because I think I may have taken drugs once, so I wanted to make sure <laughs> the child is not gonna be on the Jack Palant show, you know. Believe it or not, you know, I could... I remember they painted my house, did I breathe in fumes? You know, oh, I thought of everything. But uh, medical science can get you a very nice, healthy baby when you're old like I am. Cannot guarantee, however, when he's eight years old, wants to play baseball, you won't be wheeling after him in an oxygen tent, you know? <laughs> Throw that ball, Dad! Ah... <laughs> uh, I want to know everything. We have this sonogram made, you know, beep, 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 beep. Sonar, they, they used to, before, when they were ignorant, they used to blast the fetus with 20,000 Rankins of radiation, you know. <laughs> Wonder why when the kid was 22, he goes, hello, dad, you know, and he's just he's growing teeth out of his throat. They can't figure it. <laughs> so now it's just uh, little subtle sound waves to make a picture. And it's interesting how out of very negative, frightening things like weapons and so forth, at times, positive things accrue. I mean, it's a, you know, not worth the trade-off, but for example, finding out from sound waves is come from anti-submarine technology. Beep, 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 makes the sound. They leave out the depth charge part, <laughs> you know, and they leave in, they beep, beep. And you can see what the kids look good. And they give you a couple of Polaroids to take home. Not the kind of thing you'd whip out at the office necessarily and show your friends, my fetus Harold, what do you think? <laughs> Just like you, Robert. <laughs> Looks like E.T. for a long time. You, know? you can't tell uh, who it looks like. Boy, speaking of submarine tech, now those Swedes are the worst submarine hunters I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> they really pissed me off. You know, they've had two dozen Russian submarines operating in their bathtub for the past couple of years. And they, you know, they Yimini, we get them tomorrow. You know, they really... Damn it, they're so neutral, you know. I think they don't want to find them, you know. <laughs> Even in World War II, they couldn't take sides. Well, Churchill, Roosevelt, you have a point, and Hitler, you have a point, too. You know, you know, <laughs> take a side. <laughs> neutral, boring, you know. <laughs> One of the highest suicide rates in the world. This is, I don't know, probably they bore each other's ass off. I'm not, <laughs> maybe it's that cheese they eat that smells like dog shit. I can't. Maybe it's a seven-month night will do that to you. I don't know. <laughs> High suicide rate. Just by way of chance, uh, it so happens that dentists have a very high suicide rate, too. I don't think there's any connection. As a matter of fact, actuarially speaking, a Swedish dentist has virtually no life expectancy at all. <laughs> they drop like flies. Uh, Look, I was brought up on television. Uh, certain shows I never saw first run. I never paid attention to them, but when you're playing at a college in Norfolk, Virginia, turn on that television in the afternoon when you arrive, it's one of your friends. Gilligan's Island, I never saw first run. I've only seen the reruns. And it's interesting, it doesn't matter that you miss 25 or 30 years, they have a song at the beginning of the show <laughs> that fills you in on everything you have to know.
No Gilligan went on an island too, and the captain went with him, and Ginger and the professor too, and the maroon on an island with six marks. <laughs> I was on What's My Line once. I was the mystery guest, and this was not in the first run network. This is when it was going out of syndication already. It was, really, it was the beginning of my career 12, 13 years ago, and I was the mystery guest. Gives you some idea, right? Well, <laughs> sign in, please. Used to be thunderous applause, Robert Klein. It sounds like an owl flew into the theater. Who, 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 who? People have no idea who this is. Yeah? Well, sit down, and like an idiot, I disguise my voice. I would be afraid of it. No. Yes. What? They flipped all the cards. They had to get more cards to flip. It was too embarrassing. No one had a clue. After the 90th question there, are you bigger than a bread box? It was hopeless. <laughs> the panel could not get me. Then they took off their blindfolds, and they still couldn't get me. <laughs> Arlene Francis, even at the end. Are you sure you're in comedy, young man? <laughs> I put in that category the Channel 9 kind of thing. You know, um, Leonard Nimoy in Search Of. He's a wonderful actor, a very nice guy, I know him. And since he had ear surgery, he feels so much better at parties. You know? It's not easy being the only one of those people try not to point. But anyway, always finding men from outer space, and they have a kind of a disclaimer at the end, like a real quickie. You have to be an Evelyn Wood idiot savant graduate to read, you know. What I mean? Some of these scenes may represent actual scientific fact. Others, if you believe this bullshit, leave us alone. You know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> speculation, Okay. There are always people find that if someone from outer space lands in their backyard and they talk to them. Never credible scientific witnesses. I'll believe it when they stop landing in the backyard of some Ozark moron. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, me and my brother seen him. Well, we was drinking some, but we wasn't drunk. And we seen him come down there, and they had these green faces. And they tell me, certainly, you know. <laughs> and just drank nail polish remover with Sunoco 260 chasers. <laughs> telling me he's seeing people from outer space. Yeah, I'll believe all that when they land in Carl Sagan's backyard. Give me a call, we'll talk. <laughs> Let him land at the Princeton School for Advanced Studies, we'll talk. Call me up. Land in Mike Wallace's backyard. <laughs> They'll go back to outer space so fast you wouldn't believe it. In other words, you little green-eyed bastards are frauds. <laughs> Approximately the size of New Jersey. Everything is approximately the size of New Jersey in journalism. Huh? Thailand is a country approximately the size of New Jersey. Israel is approximately the size of New Jersey. And your mother is approximately the size of New Jersey. Well, that's approximately the size of New Jersey. It's the same kind of overall, uh, you know, covers everything cliche as tastes like chicken. That's a good one too, right? A frog's legs? Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Alligator meat, they have the freshest alligator meat. Tastes like chicken. <laughs> Rattlesnake steak, tastes uh, like chicken. <laughs> Look, what is that? Chicken. <laughs> I um, did everything a father to be should do for the preparation of the babe. Went to the Lamaz classes. I learned everything you're supposed to learn. See, the husband, they don't say husband anymore. Husband, lover, birthing partner, guy who got you pregnant, whatever, yeah. <laughs> you have to satisfy everyone's particular need in this, anyway. It's extremely worthless in this process. It's just that times have changed. Here we are in the 80s. Hey, come on, it's no longer like, like Cary Grant in the waiting room going, any results yet, nurse? Train smoking. You know. The wife mother, birthing partner, person who is pregnant, you know, now says, you're going to be in there with me. You know? um, well, he should be. Uh, they call us coaches. Coaches, ready with your stopwatches? Ready. The job is to remind your wife to breathe. 
think about that for a second, you realize exactly how worthless I am in this thing. When's the last time you had to be reminded to breathe? Right? It's like saying digest, okay? When I put my fingers in your eye, blink, please. All right, honey, ready? <laughs> Rub your wife's neck gently. Everything. And uh, they said, transition comes. That's the tough part. Don't even try to joke with your wife. Don't even try. Hey, I'm a professional comedian. <laughs> what about some really good material? <laughs> what happens is the first day they show you a movie. Okay, bad 16 millimeter. It's been spliced 4,000 times. <laughs> Motherhood and fatherhood and God and the baby comes in the thing. I'm going, are they kidding with this bullshit? One word they never use in the Lamaze class, and that is pain. <laughs> it is simply not in the vocabulary. They refer to it as discomfort. <laughs> now, I love the English language, and there are a lot of different words. Discomfort to me is, ooh, this mosquito bite is giving me a lot of discomfort. <laughs> or, this underwear will simply never do. I'm never buying these low boys again. <laughs> but, no! I can't go through with it! I can't! It's not discomfort to me. <laughs> and they even show it to you in the movie. But they make the folks singing louder when she's screaming, I can't go through And this poor yutz, I have him in the movie going, honey, should I give you massage 222? He's trying to stop watch a real putz with a mask. I feel so sorry for him because I was like that a few weeks ago. Honey, should I give you massage 29? And she goes, get the hell out of here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Your motherhood and babyhood. Motherhood. All right, my baby took hesitation Klein, took 20 hours of labor to come out. They used a plunger at the end, all right? <laughs> Came out looking like Dan Aykroyd in a conehead sketch. <laughs> and they told me they weren't bothered. Mr. Klein, guarantee you tomorrow it'll be good as new, like a Sears salesman. What the hell am I gonna do? Good as new, look at it. A plunger on his head the next thing. Looked like he had an, a fight with another baby, this kid. Right? And also the Lamaze instructress, instructor person. The instructor has all these little jokes she's used over the years, you know. Men confidentially, it's sort of like shitting a watermelon. You know, it's a, the most vulgar she, And the guys go, ha, 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 And the women go, what the hell is funny about that? <laughs> and, and, you know, the guys are, ha, ha. Oh, sorry, honey, should I time you? And, uh, somebody, a uh, psychologist at CBS um, did an interview with me, the second nine months, the husband, father, burden I got you pregnant, all of the above. <laughs> the father's reaction to the baby. And she asked me if I were jealous, and I mean, hey, Alexander, my baby, you know, he takes a lot of time. He was always at the breast, I mean, like, <laughs> constantly, I never, unbelievable word. I thought about twice, I have to admit, I did remove him from the breast and, and placed him in the hamper, but only twice. <laughs> I realized quickly, you know, when I done and I think I said something really stupid like, hey, there are other people waiting, buddy. <laughs> And I think, oh, I think I called him a little Jaime too, but I'd like to forget that. A Jaimeette, I think I called him, you know, because he's very small, Jaime. And, uh, had a nice deal, uh, circumcision. Uh, we had a brisk, went to Circumcisions R Us. They gave us a nice deal. <laughs> they bring their own uh, table, the guy, the knife. My father was doing lines. Hey, Doc, leave a little line when he grows up. Ha, ha, ha. Fainted over backwards. Okay. No, no, he's fine now, he's absolutely fine. This kid went to France, my wife's an opera singer, went to France with her when he was six weeks old, needed his own passport and photo. Do you believe this? 
His own, they used to have it on the mother's. Can you imagine what a passport photo of a six week old infant is? And <laughs> changes every 10 minutes. I could just see him fooling French customs. You know, it just, this must look like the same baby. <laughs> And here I am, a parent. Will I be as good a parent as my parents have been, with their little quirks, you know? Mom and dad are retired in uh, Tamarack, Florida. Anyone familiar with the, that uh, community? Maybe you know my daddy. Wears white pants. <laughs> they have a second childhood. They're 76 and 75. My mother has a tricycle with a huge three-foot-wide seat with Frida crocheted in the back there where the license plate should be. With a basket and a bell and unbelievable. My father says, don't tell me a lot. It's the perks of being 76. He hears you when he wants to, doesn't, you know, stubborn. Like the other day he was, they were visiting me and he, he um, was telling me, I'm putting my sugar on the blueberries wrong. He said, no, you need a spoon. Otherwise you have no idea how much you're putting on. All right, when I was 12, he went, don't cut the bagel towards your neck, Robert. <laughs> well, those kind of... <laughs> You know, protective people. I'm 42, they may even call up from Florida. Where are you going tonight? I don't know, I don't think I'm gonna go out anywhere. Good, stay home, it's nasty. You know, <laughs> I'll survive an extra 24 hours if I stay. Why don't you wear a straitjacket? In case your arms flail out, you take your eyes out. You know. <laughs> My father has this new thing, thinks everyone's Jewish. <laughs> Harry Truman, a Jew, I know. It's well known, I'm like, I don't know. Louis Farrakhan, Jewish. <laughs> it's all a thing to hide the thing. <laughs> Ryan O'Neill, Jewish. <laughs> so Michael Redgrave, Orthodox, has to be carried from his home on the Sabbath by a Gentile friend, turns his lights out. Swears he saw Babe Ruth point and hit a home run when it's well known he did it in Chicago. Said, Don't tell me. He also claims to be the little boy Babe visited in the hospital before he hit that. <laughs> I used to take an olive out of a bottle. That's poison, only one olive. Don't have another olive. Maraschino cherries, fatal, two of them. <laughs> Never ate a piece of lettuce in his life. No roughage, green vegetables of any kind. He said, it's for cows. And he can't figure out why he hasn't taken a shit in 40 years. <laughs> I'm cursed, that's all. I went to a psychiatrist uh, for about three years, till about four or five years ago. You too? I'm... I feel there's no need anymore that... I'm pretty much cured now and... And... Uh, used to go on 96th Street, the shrink city. Every apartment there was, it looks like normal apartment buildings, all occupied by psychiatrists' offices. Right? You go up in a building, yeah, it's comforting to know everyone sealed in the elevator with you is certifiably insane. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Napoleon getting out, hello. Uh, aren't you Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday? Mom says I should, Dad says I shouldn't. A 46-year-old man saying that. I'm hallucinating, let me out at four, let me out at four. I mean, you know. So. The guy before me at this doctor used to come out, he was a television critic. He said, hey, Robert Klein, didn't think you were crazy. <laughs> come over here, putz, let me give you one of these. Man. <clears throat> I was diapering my little baby, and he pissed in my eye. <laughs> they didn't tell me. <laughs> You cover it, because a little boy, you know, straight up, and <laughs> had this hilarious Jewish overreaction, you know. Honey, he urinated my eye. You think he'd be infected? Should I go to the emergency room? Or... <laughs> Comedian Robert Klein was tragically blinded last night at home. <laughs> New York Post page. <laughs> a family spokesman refused to reveal details. What do you tell a doctor? Oh, I pissed in my eye. Oh. 
one time I was feeding a squirrel in Riverside Park, and by accident, he knocked a peanut out. He was very tame over three days again. And he's like this. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mean to, but I'm looking, and my finger is in the teeth of a wild rodent. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and let's face it, a squirrel is cute, bushy tail, take away the bushy tail, you got a rat, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> they have excellent public relations, but you know, they're ice store nuts and all bullshit, you got a rat you're looking at over there. <laughs> and he gets nervous and twitches and slightly breaks my skin, just ever so slightly. And I don't know, you know, I had seen a rat there once, and it's a, and I, I thought, you know, in the movies when you get bitten by a rattlesnake and you go to your friend, suck the poison out, you know. <laughs> You gotta be a pretty good friend to suck the poison out of someone. So I'm gonna suck the poison out of it. I don't want to suck the poison. Out of it. Gross. I'm dying. Suck the poison. You're my friend, aren't you? You didn't lend me a car last week. <laughs> Also, I remember, take it easy, don't move too fast. Anyway, I didn't think much of it, but there's a doctor's office, an old German doctor was there, 96th Street, with Buck Rogers, 1930s equipment, a filthy old dusty office, and I go in and I say, uh, I guess there's nothing, but I, I was bitten by a squirrel, and he, then he said, just what I didn't want to hear. <laughs> you were bitten by a squirrel? You know, I can hardly even see it. it Go to St. Luke's Hospital immediately. The emergency room. I'll call ahead. <laughs> and then I remember, take it easy. The poison spreads more slowly if you go, taxi. <laughs> Taking it easy. Cab, we race up to 114th Street and Amsterdam Avenue. There's an emergency room there with a line around the block. People patiently waiting with axes still in their back. A few serious bullet wound cases, children dying of pleurisy, plenty of spirit of 76, bloody rags, seizures. I don't know, should I go to the front of the line or not? There's an intern there like MASH. You got a code four here. Put more adrenaline there. No, get him out here. This man is dying. Get him. I go, excuse me, doctor. What, what? <laughs> I've been with a squirrel here. I got a tetanus shot. What happened is there hadn't been any reported rabies in the Northeast in 40 years. The only way you can get rabies up here is if you soul kiss a bat. <laughs> Isn't it, you know, one of the ironies here's Mr. Child of the 50s and now man of the 80s. We're still tormented by the same thing and that is the nuclear business. We were the first nuclear children. I was born in 1942, and uh, the teachers were kind of old-fashioned then, and civil defense was it, day in, day out in school. That's all we heard. And, of course, they were very subtle. Children, these tags are to be taken home. We got dog tags, and we heard rumors that they could withstand 10,000 degrees centigrade of heat. And they had your last name, first name, your address, and religion, and inclined Robert Hebe, I think it said something. Like that. <laughs> children, these tags... The teachers spent most of their time going, no talking, put on your lips. No talking, oh my God, talking. These tags are to be, t no talking. These tags are to be taken home. They are to be worn in the event that you're burnt beyond recognition in a nuclear holocaust. <laughs> and no talking during a nuclear holocaust. I want an orderly nuclear holocaust. <laughs> Two lines, you know. I remember vividly these charts they had in the classrooms and everything else of concentric circles, always assuming the Russians in 1956 would have the aim to hit at Times Square. You know, approximately the size of New Jersey. It's another one. Of <laughs> How far is Singapore? From Times Square? Oh. The Russians bombed at Times Square or at least up to 48th Street. They tell you how it happens to you. Up to Tuckahoe, New York, you're a raisin in four seconds. 
Crew, Connecticut, your teeth and hair fall out in four and a half minutes, you die instantly. Up to Maine, you throw up for eight hours and die after that. Yeah. <laughs> then they had sudden ones, there's no warning at all. Together! Have to get under the desk and put your ass to the window. <laughs> they even said in the poster, put your ass immediately to the window. Signed, Averill Harriman, governor. He was... <laughs> you know, my first impulse at live show business was in the Catskill Mountains in the summer. I worked as a busboy and a lifeguard in these hotels. And especially the, the um, comedian on the Saturday night show, these mountain comics, it really it absolutely fascinated me. They'd come out, uh, hey, you know, hey, very staccato. Hey, you two bald-headed men, you put your heads together, you make an ass of yourself, but seriously. <laughs> Insult and, you know, things. Hey, what are you doing now? Oh, the clarinet gets stuck in their mouth. <laughs> then it'd go into this English jokes with Yiddish punchlines. They did this sometimes, and it drove me crazy. I don't understand Yiddish. And the guy has me hooked on a good story, and I'm trailing along. You know what happened last night? I went to my wife. I said, let's make love. She said, I can't. Went to the doctor, got a pill. You know what happened? <laughs> Ask an old guy next to you who understands that. Excuse me, he's going, <laughs> you know, and it's usually an idiom. It doesn't mean exactly. I said, What do he say? He says, he says uh, I have your clothes on the clothesline good. <laughs> it, was a, it, was a, it was a joke about a doctor, and they're going, Yeah, 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 yeah. And the doctor, they got the doctor, and he, he says, Sure, you, I get you clothes on the clothesline. Good, buddy, mister, something like that. <laughs> but what does it have to... Look, if I have you... You take the laundry. You hang it on the line. Then I go to you. I'd say, I got your laundry on the... In other words, in other words, he goes, he takes the, the clothes. In other words, he takes... He, he, let me... He takes the clothes. In other words, he takes the clothes. He, he takes... May, June, July, August, 1956 and 56. In other words, he takes... If I take the clothes, and... Now, a lot of these comedians would play the so-called minestrone circuit, too, the Italian hotels up there. It fascinated me when I got a chance to see that. In many ways, the same. Other words, in other ways, they start off a little more low-key, come out, hey, bonjour. Eh? <laughs> start throwing out a couple of words, kind of getting good with the audience, Italian words, hey, pizza. ISIS. <laughs> Rocky Calavino and me. Like, uh, uh, Wadia. Uh. Then they go into the joke. You know what happened last night? I went to my wife. I said, let's make love. She said, I can't. Went to the doctor, got a pill. You know what happened? I'm about the ass. It's the Italian. I read somewhere, Paul Winchell, the great ventriloquist, the best at not moving his lips of all time. No question about it. Was, he loved, always loved him. Uh, Edgar Bergen was a great innovator, but moved his lips beyond all belief. You know, you couldn't tell which one was talking. Hi, Edgar. Hi, Charlie. It was, uh, moved his lips more when he was the not the dummy. I don't know. Paul Winchell is a closet doctor like I am, you know. I wanted to be a doctor, a few things got in my way. You know, calculus, physics, attendance, <laughs> behavior, inclination, talent. I don't know. <laughs> Paul Winchell participated in the, in the creation of a, an experimental heart, artificial heart in Utah, not the Jarvik, but the, did you read that? True. Uh, uh, he was one of the people who participated, and they implanted it in a calf. I think it died in about three seconds. <laughs> Let's not get carried away. He is a ventriloquist, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> not 
my first choice for maker of my artificial heart. You know, Robert, we've got two choices for that heart. A heart surgeon or a ventriloquist. What's your choice? <laughs> Tough one, because there are pros and cons. I think I'll go with the ventriloquist. You agree, Jimmy? Certainly, Mr. Klein. <laughs> But I understand he had them in stitches in that surgical room there. First of all, he made the heart talk, which is a pisser. You got it, you know? And, uh, I mean, that ventricle didn't stop yapping there. It was unbelievable. And he drank a glass of water throughout the entire procedure. It was marvelous. I did a few years, about seven years ago, I did the $20,000 pyramid. Certainly one of the better games. You know, that's the one where you go, pickles, St. Patrick's Day, grass, things that are green, you know? Santa Claus beard, snow, things that are white, right? This screws you up for two weeks. You walk around the street, people say, hi, Robert. Things you're saying a greeting. <laughs> Going to a restaurant to eat. Mr. Klein, good to see you again. How many are you? Today? Things are made for <laughs> First of all, it was so embarrassing. I'm playing with some lovely, a stenographer makes 280 a week and she could make 15 grand, you know. And uh, I don't blame her, right? And I, it took me such a long time. Dick Clark was so patient, as you might expect from me, but it was embarrassing. And I had a card in front of me that says, things that are green. I went, things that are green. <laughs> what, Dick? You know, it's awful. <laughs> things you sew buttons on. <laughs> uh, Bobby, you know, doesn't he look great, Dick Clark? Man, he looks young. I've seen him up close, too. It's real. God, he's in here. I don't know how long. I think it's all going to collapse on him one day and wake up, look in the mirror, and Dorian Gray himself right into a suicide. You know. You know. <laughs> anyway. The reason, the reason that I don't want, the reason that I don't want to play those games anymore is too much pressure. I got a thousand for the day, right? You do all five shows in one day. I brought a Hager two-pan suit so I wouldn't look like a pig who wore the same thing all week. And <laughs> a computer figured out there are a million six hundred thousand parameters. You know, the jacket, the vest, first pair of pants, and the second pair of pants. Jacket, no vest, first pair of pants. Jacket, no vest, no pants. Pants inside out, the other leg, jacket inside out. Go punk, you know. No jacket, just the vest and pants. You figure it out. Everyone at work thinks you're a great dresser, of course, you're 90 bucks. Anyway. You have a nice leisurely lunch between Wednesday and Thursday. It's not bad. But I was playing opposite uh, uh, Lynn Redgrave, and her woman won 15,000, and the woman I'm playing with wins a hair curler. Man, I mean, not a dryer. We're not talking 1895. We're talking about Walgreens 2.99 on this. <laughs> and, you know, she tried to be understanding. I guess you didn't realize pickles are green. <laughs> you dumb Jew bastard! It kind of. Got... <laughs> oh. <laughs> How about a big hand for Bob Stein and the Robert Klein Orchestra? Come on, give him a big hand, <laughs> Bob. Bowling shirts, whose idea was that? And bags to match by gum. It's always the most depressing thing. Week after the Super Bowl, you turn on the television for some football. Popolsky is bowling a 242. I like the bowl, I don't like to watch it. And people in Akron watching this who really give a shit. It's a 710, Harold. Spring football, I don't know, Herschel Walker, that was a shame. Young man had one month to a college degree. And they gave him $16 million, took him away, to, away from college. How do they look themselves in the mirror in the morning when they shave? How's he gonna make a living without a college degree? <laughs> Baseball players are a little immature. I remember last year I was in the locker room and Women sports writers had to win the right by court edict to be able to go in and cover the game like men. Wonderful writer from the New York Times was there, a woman. And these players are passing like real juveniles. They're all naked and going with towels. Hey, baby! You know, like, <laughs> awful. I mean, what perp why, why should a man be buffing his testicles? 
I mean, there's no reason for it, right? You know, you're a man. Let's talk turkey. I've had testicles for 42 years. I've never buffed them. You know, this is not silverware. You can hurt yourself there in case you have to hurt. You're going, hey, honey, like this. And it's awful vulgar. I mean, I go to a hotel, I'll take the soap, you know, maybe the bathing cap. I've never taken the testicle buffer. I never will. They're just awful, you know? I'd like to do an oldie, you know, uh, I am the child of the 50s, man of the 80s. A real oldie, old. many of you won't remember this. If you do, come right in. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's a cappella too, you know, most of the oldies were. Ich in dominum confite Remember that one from 1312? That was an oldie. I love that. I say let's go forward. Good old days is a lot of crap. Tomorrow, today, that's what counts. So you think the Middle Ages were so terrific? <laughs> Ever hear a, middle evil, uh, a medieval instrument like a crumb horn? I think you said you played one. Between that and smallpox, these people were anxious to hurtle into the Renaissance as quickly as possible. <laughs> Plus, there was no cable. <laughs> what do you tell a kid today? I think I'm a father. You have a couple of sons there, Stanley. What? My mother used to tell me, eat your food because kids in Europe are starving. I was born in 1942. That wouldn't work with a kid. You have to increase the, you know, kids in Afghanistan don't have HBO. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell. <laughs> Look, I'm an old guy now. You know what I mean? And, and MTV looks violent to me. Um, dum, dum, da, dum, da, a woman's head blows off. Um, dum, dum, <laughs> it's putting on the red guy gets run over. I don't understand. <laughs> right in there. I want to. See, I like a song with a good lyric. To me, a clever lyric. What am I getting so tight jawed about? I like a song with a clever lyric. I want to know. I want to know. I want to know. I want to, I want to, I want to, I 
want to, I want to know. The song was called The Pursuit of Knowledge. <laughs> oh, I just remember what I want to know, and it wasn't that important. Anyway. Yes, I'm an oldie. That's my oldie person thing. I think I pretty much, uh... I used to make a lot of money with this on the subway. You know those people that annoy you? Uh, what call them? Amazing Chris, give me a dollar, I'll embarrass this shit out of you. you know those... <laughs> to do a song that meant so very, 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 very much to me. It's a song that... A song that I had the pleasure of first hearing in Memphis, Tennessee in 1962. A song that... I don't like that slapstick humor and <laughs> subtlety. I like the intellectual twist and turn. I think this song pretty well sums up my feelings. And if you know it, you're lying. <clears throat> and we have some mood lighting, please. Thank you. No change, right? I've been to California Round the Horn of Texas Up to Minnesota Down to Arkansas Seen the plains of Kansas The mountains of Virginia This time of year Started in Nebraska South to Alabama Up north to Alaska I was New Jersey bound Had a chocolate soda in the hills of South Dakota Oh yeah But the brown is beautiful This time of year Traveling is so much fun You steal the hotel so Watch the TV set Try the vibe of Cleveland Spent a month there one day Been a lot of places I've seen an awful lot of faces yeah. But the band is beautiful It's time
It's very kind. Now for the real ending. <laughs> Isn't that fun to be at my age, to jump in, up and down like a lunatic on stage? Where's my mouth hop? Oh, it's in my pocket. Oh, I'm so absent minded. Gee, you've been a great one. My only medical contribution. One time I just put it in my mouth and breathed in and out, and the harmonica played a tune which reflected my breathing, gave me an idea. Make a hell of a nurse's aide. <laughs> Guy is sick in the hospital. Nurse can put one of these in his mouth. Here, always breathing. Go away, play cards. <laughs> have different keys. You can have harmony during the breathing. Depends on what illnesses they have, you know, or what rhythms. But any problem, she hears right away musically. Dr. Klein, your A-flat is active, you know. <laughs> but I'm to expire, that's the word they use in the hospital. Can you believe that? Is that dehumanizing? Is that dignity? I don't know if it's a man or a library card. I'm sorry, he expired. <laughs> Shoot, we could have renewed the son of a bitch. Why don't you get it? <laughs> Newsweek expires. I'm gonna die someday, I don't expire. We... At least if he expires, it ends on an expiration. Very final sounding, resolved, appropriate chord. You know what I mean? Oh, 
thank you, Lord. I'm gonna thank you for stopping my leg. Oh, feels so good. Feels so good. Feels so good. Did I? So sitting on the ground with my other leg. Oh, like a good leg ought to be. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, 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 yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, perhaps. <laughs> there it goes again! Thank you very much for coming tonight. You can stop the day. I had a great time. Love a giant You can stop the day.